Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and welcome back. I have a really great uh, video tutorial today on how to make a very simple crossfade and zoom effect for image galleries or banner rotators. Um, and if you look at this Swift that I'm interacting with right now, you'll see that as I click each one of these buttons, we have a non-linear crossfade, which is very important. I can go from any image to any other image and the currently selected image grows and fades out while the new image grows and fades in. All right, so you have this really nice little effect. And if I go really quick through it, you know, you get this nice little tunnel vision thing. It never breaks, it's bulletproof like everything else that we do here. And uh, just has a lot of nice flair and pizzazz. Now, when I was started building this tutorial here, um, I've got a lot of stuff going on here at snorkel.tv. Um, I have a big tutorial uh, for Timeline Max that I've been working on for a while, which introduces some OOP concepts. I have some big site updates to do. I have contests coming up where I'm going to be giving away uh, really green Club Green Sock memberships. We've got a whole bunch of those that I'm going to be dishing out for a variety of reasons. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and I really just wanted to get something going to sort of fill in the blanks so you guys and who come back every week have something to see. And I first started this because uh, it came up in the thread on the Green Sock forums where somebody just wanted to do a very simple crossfade, and I sort of worked it out. And I was like, you know what? This is going to be pretty cool. Once I added the zoom into it, um, I looked over my code, which is fairly concise, and I said, you know what? This thing is going to be cool for a lot of people, and uh, I'm actually quite proud of it. Um, it. This might be one of the better things that I've done uh, because it really harps on one of the themes that I like to put across to people who are learning ActionScript, and that is, if you know only a half a dozen core ActionScript principles, um, there's so much you can do when you mix and match these variety of uh, techniques and or features. Um, and these things are understanding variables, understanding buttons and event listeners, next, conditional statements, you know, your if this, then that, um, arrays, and as we've been focusing on a light here, on a lot here, tween light, uh, any sort of animation you want to do, tween light with tween max, timeline light, timeline max, those tools make your animations easy as pie. And lastly, I've always said if you know how to load external data, images, sound, that sort of stuff, you really need to know that in this day and age. And I haven't touched on those things too much yet, uh, but with my new love for Loader Max, which is also made by GreenSock, um, it really rounds out the entire package. And this little demo here includes five of my core ActionScript fundamental concepts. Um, mixes them all together to get something that you could never build just on the timeline, or you could not build it very easily. All right, so with all that said, um, let's dig into this little file here. I'm going to show you how the FLA is set up, and then we'll get into filling in the blanks with some of the code. All right, so again, here is the effect that we're going for, an interactive crossfade and zoom. So let's close this Swift, and I'm just going to walk you through some of the basic code in my start file, a lot of the stuff that we've done before. Okay, starting at the top, we're importing all the green sock classes that we'll need. Uh, we're going to be using easing, and we're going to be using some plugins. I've activated the scale plugin so that when I scale something up, I don't have to set scale X and scale Y independently, I can just say scale to a value of 2 or 0.5 and just do it once. I have a whole tutorial on the scale plugin. Look for my five wonders of tween light if you want to learn more about that. The next thing I do is I set up an array that has the instance names of all of the big images that I'm going to be tweening through. Okay, we start off with audio jungle, theme forest, graphic river, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and now I don't want all of these clips to be visible out of the box, so by using a tween max all two with one line of code, I can set all of their alpha and visible properties to zero. This is another feature that was listed in my tutorial on the five wonders of tween light and tween max, so check that out. So one line of code makes them all have an alpha of zero and a visible of false. The next thing we do is I take the first image in that array, the one with an index of zero, and I set its auto alpha property to one. So here I automatically set everything down to be invisible, but the first item in the array will always be visible when this movie loads up. 
The next thing I do is I tell each of the buttons in my nav, so here I have something on the stage called nav MC, and inside of there I have buttons called audio jungle button, and I have theme forest button, and for each image there is a respective button here, okay? And I'm telling each button to have an ID, so I'm dynamically giving these buttons an ID property, which um, references the index of the image they're going to control in my array. So the audio jungle button for its ID of zero allows us to look into this array and pull out audio jungle and then go to code canyon that has an index of five. Well that means zero, one, two, three, four, five is going to give me the code canyon clip. Um, I use the index because I just didn't want to write out audio jungle theme forest, graphic river, all that stuff again. There's a few ways of doing this, um, but this gets the job done. Next, we're setting the button mode of my entire nav movie clip equal to true, so that when I roll over it, I get the finger cursor. Next, we're just setting up some very basic event listeners. Um, whenever we click on the nav, we're gonna call the crossfade function, which is the main driver of how this application works. Button over and button out, will trigger the uh, color changes of each button. You'll also notice that I'm putting all my event listeners just on the nav. I'm not telling each individual button what event listener to use. I'm telling the container navmc which event listener to use. And this saves me a lot of time from saying navmc.audiojunkle.editevent listener, mouse over, blah, 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 theme forest, add event listener, graphic river. I don't have to go through all six of them. And I have tutorials that use this method quite a bit as well. You can look up um, a search on my site for target versus current target, and uh, that'll start you off just fine. All right, next thing we do is that in order to fade out the currently visible clip, I need to always keep track of what that is. So I'm keeping a variable here called current clip, which is going to always keep track of the large and visible image. And when we start out, it's going to be the first image in the array. So I just say, hey, go into my clips array and give me the item with an index of zero. By keeping things in an array, it makes it easy later on to switch their order around. And I just know that the first item in the array is the one that's going to be current and visible. Now, crossfade is what happens whenever we click on a button. And whenever I click on a button, a few things need to happen. First, I need to start zooming out the currently visible clip, and while that's happening, I need to zoom in the requested clip. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a reference to the movie clip related to the button you just clicked. What that means, if I click on the audio jungle button, I wanna bring in the audio jungle image. So this variable called this button's movie points to that clip, because it's gonna go into the clips array and based on the ID of the button I clicked, that's gonna pull me out the right movie clip with the proper index. Now, just to show you how this works, I'm gonna do a simple trace. I'm gonna say, whenever I click the button, let's trace out whatever this button's movie happens to be, and we'll get its name. So now when I test, you'll see that when I click on the last button, my output says Code Canyon. This one over here tells me links to the ocean clip. And then we have active den. And so each button knows which movie clip it's supposed to control. All right, that's the whole point of that. When I click on a button, based on its ID, it can tell me which movie clip it's going to be introducing. All right, so let's go back to my actions. And first thing I'm gonna do is zoom out the current clip. I know when I first start this movie that current clip is the first movie clip in my array. So what I'm going to do is save you the trouble of watching me make typos, and we'll just do a little bit of a copy and paste job here. So I'm going to use tween light to tell the current clip to take 0.5 seconds to set the auto alpha of zero. Again, that's going to not only fade it out, but toggle the visible property to false. Using the scale plugin, I don't have to say scale X and scale Y. I just say scale is going to be two, which makes it twice as big as its normal size and this is the ease that we will use. So let's just see how this works right now. So my application knows that current clip is audio jungle. If I press on any button, that image grows, 
and fades out, and I also get told which button I just clicked. If I do this again, nothing's going to happen because the current clip has already been faded out. There's nothing for it to do. All right, so while that current clip is fading out, I also want to introduce the requested clip. All right, and the requested clip is this button's movie. Remember, that's the way we're referring to it. So I'm going to say the next thing I want to do is show the clip related to the button you just pressed. And again, that is how we refer to it by this button's movie. So I'm going to use tween max, and I'm going to do a from to tween, which allows me to set the starting values of the object that I'm tweening and also the ending values so that I know that it's always going to start very small and always get very big. So this button's movie is the one that I'm going to be introducing. I'm going to take a little bit longer. I'm going to start from a value of zero for the scale and I'm going to tween to an auto alpha of one, a scale of one, and I just have a slight delay on here just so that um, I like the way the timing works. So it's not happening exactly when the other movie is growing. The other one can sort of get out of the way and then this one comes in. You can mess with that number as much as you like. So let's do this. Watch what happens. Just by having these two tweens in here, I'm going to now bring in Code Canyon while Audio Jungle goes out. If I click on this button right here, Code Can, well, it's not gonna work. Oh, you'll see the Theme Forest comes in and we're getting some trouble here of oh, Audio Jungle Works. Now what's happening is our app doesn't know which clip it should be removing and it's just introducing a new clip which is probably hidden by the current clip. So the idea here is that it doesn't work perfectly yet but out of the box we do have one transition. I can go from Audio Jungle to Code Canyon just fine. But the thing is, my app still thinks that Audio Jungle is the current clip. So when I go to tween again, things go a little bit wonky, all right? So what I need to do is always update the value of current clip whenever I click on a new nav button. So here, the comment says, reset current clip to reflect the clip related to the button you just clicked. So I'm always going to be swapping in what the current clip is whenever I click a new button. So to do that, we're just going to say current clip equals this button's movie. All right. And now here we're about 90% of what we need to do. So I can now go to Code Canyon. I can go to 3D Ocean. I can go to Active Den. And you'll see that I can go from any clip now to any other clip. The current clip always fades out. The new clip comes in. And then current clip gets set to the new selected clip. All right, and this works all the way through except for when we get to the part where if I'm on Code Canyon and I click Code Canyon again, it's kind of silly to have a transition from the clip you're on to the clip you're on. So we're going to put in a little conditional statement that gets rid of that. We're going to make sure that the button you're clicking isn't related to the current clip that you're seeing. And to do that, we have, again, just a little if statement. So let's go back to my actions. And before I do any tweens at all, what I'm going to do is ask the question right up here. If the current clip is not equal to this button's movie, all right, so that, that's how we keep track of the current clip and what clip we've selected. If that isn't the same, then it's okay to do these things. Um, and do the reset at the end and we're going to put all of that inside of that conditional statement. All right, so now if I'm on Audio Jungle, clicking the Audio Jungle button doesn't do any tweens, but I can go to any other section. If I'm on Graphic River, clicking the Graphic River button doesn't do anything, but I can go to any other section and I can click really quickly through all of these and it works just great. Now, if you're watching closely, um, there are some things that might get in the way um, of each other. Right now, it's not too noticeable, but just as a little catch-all, I always want to make sure the current clip is on top of everything else. So, the one that's in front and coming at you, I just want to make sure it is, in fact, 
on the topmost layer. So I'm just going to use a little add child here, and I'm going to say um, add child current clip. All right, so that's always going to be on the top, and you're not going to have something underneath it. All right, right now my nav MC is on the topmost layer, but what's going to happen is the when I, as soon as I do add child current clip, it's going to place it on top of nav MC, and this is just a little bit, you know, finessey right here. And you'll see if you look very close that the fade, or I'm sorry, the zoom out is going on top of my nav. And that might look a little bit wonky to some of you. So if I want to keep the nav always on top of everything, I'm going to use add child nav MC. So once I put the current clip on top, then I'm going to put nav MC on top of it. Okay. And I should probably add to my list that the display list is very important to understand as well but I don't want to be too overwhelming. So here we go, guys. Now we have, in just a few moments, a totally nonlinear zoom and crossfade effect. All right, we don't have to add a bunch of tweens to our timeline or have a bunch of nested movie clips with animations. Tween light is handling the whole thing. Whenever we click a button, we say, hey, tell the current clip to get bigger and fade out and introduce the clip that this button is related to. So hopefully you guys find this uh, little uh, application useful. You know, you could combine this with some things that I've done before. If you want these buttons to stay lit up after you click them, you can uh, look on my site for my sticky nav demo. And you could also put links onto each of these things. And you might even have an autoplay feature where the animation happens automatically and it automatically rotates through all the files. Uh, but that's a whole nother deal. But now you have a nice starting point for these sorts of transitions. And once you have this in place, you can, you know, totally change it around if you want. I can go to my actions frame right here, and I'm just going to say, you know what, maybe the current clip gets scaled out to a scale of uh, zero, and maybe the new clip that comes in starts at a scale of two, and it goes to a scale of one. So now I've just reversed how this is going to work. The current clip sort of gets sucked out while the new clip comes in. And you can play with those tweens, the uh, speed and the easing. And by just making a few changes, it's a totally different effect. All right, so that's it, guys. Welcome back. Stay tuned. Like I said, I'm going to be giving away some really green Club Green Sock memberships, uh, which are also going to allow you to become shockingly green for only 50 bucks. Um, it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned, and uh, we got a lot more coming. Thanks, guys.